tenons-nous debout pour prier le Seigneur. Père, au nom de Jésus, nous te remercions ce soir, nous bénissons ton nom. Merci pour la bonne œuvre faite ici. Nous prions que ton service pour ton peuple soit bénéfique au nom de Jésus-Christ. Tous les frères, les dirigeants, les jeunes, tout le monde ici présent, je prie que tu fortifies tout le monde au nom de Jésus-Christ. Illumine ton peuple. Fortifie. Pays au nom de Jésus Christ. Ce soir, parle à chacun de nous. Réveille-nous. Excite-nous. Aide-nous à avancer et à faire l'œuvre que tu as remise dans nos mains. Nous te remercions parce que tu nous as exaucés. Au nom de Jésus, nous prions. Merci beaucoup. Je vous parle ce soir de l'évangélisation. Au fait, le titre est « Le ministère de l'évangéliste dans le monde ». Le ministère de l'évangéliste dans le monde. Marc 16, verset 15. Puis il leur dit « Allez par tout le monde et prêchez. la bonne nouvelle à, à combien de personnes à toute la création il s'est dit que celui qui croira et, et qui sera baptisé sera sauvé mais celui qui ne croira pas sera condamné j'ai des croyants aujourd'hui parce que tu as cru et que tu es baptisé tu seras sauvé mais ceux qui ne croient pas seront condamnés Jean chapitre 17 verset 16 Jean 17 verset 16 Jean 17, 16. Ils ne sont pas du monde, comme moi je ne suis pas du monde. C'est là que plusieurs s'arrêtent que je ne, ne sont pas du monde, parce que Jésus n'est ne, pas du monde, et il prêche contre la mondanité, et tout ce qu'ils font dans leur petit cercle, c'est ce qu'ils font, ne sont pas du monde, et se sont séparés du monde, et ils n'ont aucun impact aucune influence sur le monde. Verset 17. Sanctifie-les par ta vérité. Ta parole est la vérité. C'est là que certains s'arrêtent. Dieu merci, nous sommes les de nouveau. Dieu merci, je suis sauvé. Dieu merci, nous sommes sanctifiés. Dieu merci, je suis sanctifié. Il y a des gens sanctifiés, des gens sanctifiés, mais séparés des gens sanctifiés oh, et qui s'enferment et qui se confinent. Ils sont sanctifiés Born is to reproduce, and the reason we come into the kingdom is to reach out and bring other people into the kingdom. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so thou also sent them into the world. It's talking about all these disciples, it's talking about all believers, it's talking about all the people that have washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's talking about everyone that has tasted the grace of God and the goodness of God, and he said, I brought them out. Of the world. That's not only apostles. I brought them out of the world. That's not only the men. I brought them out of the world. He's talking about the men and the women, the believers all together. And he said, I brought them out and he sent them forth, I sent them into the world so that they will do the work I came to do over here. And this is what happened in the early church. Acts of the apostles, chapter 8. Acts of the apostles, chapter 8. And I'm reading here. From verse 4. It says, Therefore, they that was scattered abroad went everywhere. What were they doing? They were preaching the gospel. They were preaching the word. That's how the church expanded. 
That's how the church grew. That's how the church multiplied. Look at the effect. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. Multiplication is going to take place here. More people coming to the kingdom, more believers being born into the kingdom, and more disciples being made, even in this land in Jesus' name. We're going to reach every tribe. We're going to reach every local government. We're going to reach every community until there will be no house where there's not a member of this church. You know, come this house, they say, oh, we know your member is here, come and see him. And then your member is here, come and see her. Every Every house will have the gospel. Every house will have the believer. It is when we understand how we did it in the early days, and we know how we're going to do it now, and the same fire that was in them at that time, and the same zeal, the same passion in us at that time, that fire is coming back. You know, some people say revival is coming. There's no revival without evangelism. You cannot say you have revival if only those of us who are here were fired up and then we go around and we say praise the Lord we do Jericho march and then we say we're casting out devils where well, you casting out devils from the people who are outside you reach out to them cast the devil out of them they repent of their sins they are born again and more people are coming to the kingdom when the church is growing that is revival I said that is revival and that revival that has started here will never stop in Jesus name and the word of God increased and the number of disciples was multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests also were obedient to the faith. Even those who are idol worshippers, they are going to be converted. The priests are going to be converted. The false prophets are going to be converted. And all those white gummy people, candle burning, incense burning people, the gospel is coming to them. And a great stirring up is going to happen everywhere. And many people will come to know the Lord in Jesus' name. But you know, it is when we take that gospel and we understand why Jesus Christ has left us here on earth. And he says, As thou Father has sent me the Savior, even so have I sent them into the world. Now we know that we have a ministry, we have a message, and we have a mission to give to the world. And then we carry out that ministry, and we speak out that message, and we carry out to fulfill that mission. That's when this thing we're talking about, the expansion of the kingdom, the establishment of the kingdom, the exaltation of our king. That's when it will take place. It will take place in our midst here in Jesus' name. We're looking at this, the evangelist's ministry in the world. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the irreplaceable ministry of a steadfast evangelist. The irreplaceable ministry of the steadfast evangelist. Number two, the irrevocable message of a single-minded evangelist. And then number three now is the irreproachable model. The irreproachable models for soul winning evangelists. The irreproachable models of soul winning evangelists. Tell me number one over there. The irreplaceable ministry of steadfast evangelists. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. I'm reading to you from, uh, from verse five. Second Timothy chapter four, and we're reading from verse five. It says in verse five, it says, "But watch thou in all things." Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of that ministry. You'll find here Paul, the apostle, talking to Timothy, and he was telling uh, Timothy, you see, Timothy was uh, a timid personality. Timothy was a person you can easily frighten. Timothy was a person you can easily intimidate and make afraid. The frown of a sailor could easily make Timothy. 
Timothy a pray. The proud of backsliders can easily make Timothy a prey. And all the opposition and resistance of idol worshippers can easily make Timothy a prey. You know, in the community in which we're living, the masquerades may make you afraid, and the idol worshippers may make you afraid. Your cultic people can make you afraid, and all the sinners can make you afraid. But in spite of that fear, Paul the apostle called upon Timothy said Timothy what are you doing you have a duty and a fearful person cannot do that duty and you have a responsibility if you are timid and fearful and you are backward and you are reserved and you are retarded and you cannot go out and reach out you never reach anybody but from today you will reach somebody I said you will reach somebody you throw your fears to the wind and you say here is what the Lord has called me to do as a man, as a woman, as a soul winner, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a teacher, as a preacher, he has called you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you don't do it, the people will perish. They will spend eternity in hell forever and ever. And then he says, the blood when I require at your hand. That's why throw your fears away. And then it says in that verse, you look at chapter 1, chapter 1 of verse 2 Timothy, verse 7, for God has not given us, tell me, for God has not given to us, tell me, now you're going to make it personal, one, two, three, go, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, you know, I look at my little boy, when that little, when that boy was little, I said, that's in your I didn't give you that thing, where did you get that thing, mommy, you look at your daughter, and she's having some biscuits, you say, where did you get that, I didn't give you biscuits, you look at, you know, your daughter, is wearing in a particular dress, come on here. Where did you get this? I didn't give you this. Where did you get it? And that's what the Lord is asking you. I didn't give you the spirit of fear. Where did you get it? Who gave you? How did you get this one? Don't you know that I told you if a stranger gives you any biscuit, don't take it. If a stranger gives you granules, don't take it. If a stranger gives you anything, don't take it. How is it, Mama and Papa? The one that tells little children is Stranger gives you something, don't get And then you're the one that takes on the spirit of fear. Throw it back. I say, throw it back. The Father did not give that to you. The Savior did not give that to you. The Lord did not give that to you. Wherever it came from, send it back to the sender. I said, send it back to the sender. And so the courage of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord is coming upon you today in Jesus' name. He says, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. I did an amen there. For God has not, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's why I told Timothy chapter 4 verse 5, chapter 4 verse 5, it says, watch thou in all things and endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work okay. of an evangelist. What's the work of an evangelist? How do you know an evangelist? When an evangelist is in operation, when an evangelist is in the ministry, when an evangelist is doing something, and you know that this is the work of the evangelist. How do you recognize him? You recognize him by the word go and by the word preach. By the word go and by the word preach, he is going, going into all the world and preach and he's preaching. When you see somebody, it's not just, it's not just a one of the words go. A person may go and preach. A person may go and play. A person may go and gamble. A person may go and just waste his life and waste his time. That's not evangelism. A person may preach. He may stay in our locality here and preach. That's not evangelism. He may be talking to the same people all the time. He's preaching, but that's not evangelism. It's why you do those two things together. Go, preach. Go, preach. And you join everything together. You go to the market and preach. You go to the school and preach. You go to the college and preach. You go to your community and preach. You go to the village and preach. You go to where those people are gathering and you preach. 
that's the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Look at this. And we're looking at Jonah chapter 3 verse 2. Jonah chapter 3 verse 2. We're looking for those two words because it's those two words coming together. Those two active words. Action words. Verbs. Those words that make up the work of the soul winner. Look at Jonah chapter 3 verse 2. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and tell me the next word. Preach, preach unto it, the preaching that I bid thee is going and is preaching. He has to go and he has to preach. And when those two words come together, that's evangelism. That means you are going as an evangelist. That means you are going as a soul winner. You're preaching the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, we're reading from verse 38. Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 38. Uh, let's, let's look at it from verse 36. And Simon and they that were we seen followed after him. And, and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Let's stay here and preach. That's not evangelism. All men seek for thee and they are coming to your location and you stay there. And you know, every Monday you are there, every Tuesday you are there, Wednesday you are there, Saturday you are there, every time you are there. That's not evangelism. And that's why he says now in verse 38, and he said unto them, Let us go. Give me that word again. Let us go. Say it out loud. Let us go, let us go. It says, let us go on to the next towns. We must go to the next town. We must go to the next village. We must go to the next community. We must go to that next school there. We must go to that college there. We must go to the next place. And let us go to the next towns. And what do we do there? That I may preach. That's it. Just going alone does not make evangelism. You must go and you must preach. As you are going, you are preaching. And you are not staying in the same place. You are moving from this place to that place to that place. And you are preaching the gospel unto them. Then it says, for therefore came I forth. Therefore came I forth. We are looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 16. In Luke chapter 9, verse 16, look at what it says. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and do what? And preach the kingdom of God. You see that those two words must come together before we say that's an evangelist, that's a soul winner, that's a prisoner, so copilot like Christ is bringing the sinners in and he's going all the places and he's going everywhere and he's preaching the gospel. What's the past tense of go? Wait, what's the past tense of preach? Preach. Now, if you look at that word went and you look at the word preach, you see they also come together. Go and preach. They went and they preach. We're looking at um, we're looking at Mark chapter six. Mark chapter six, and I'm reading from verse twelve. Mark chapter six, and we're reading from verse twelve. It says in verse twelve, Mark chapter six, reading from verse twelve. It says, and they went out, and what did they do? and preached that men should repent if they did it why are we not going to do it if they were faithful why are we not going to be faithful if they were not just stay static in one place and they went and they went and they went why are we not going we must go they went and they preached that men should repent mark chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 20 they went and they preached they went and they preached mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 20 and they went Zanale. forth we're Zanale. going forth Zanale. and preached Zanale. everywhere Zanale. the lord Zanale. walking Zanale. Walk. Them and confirming the word was signs for them, and the whole church said, Amen. That's what they did, and that's how they did it, and that's how we are going to do it. We're coming to point number two. What's your point number two there? 
What to do is the poem. Really, vocable message of a single-minded evangelist. Irrevocable, I told you, means untreble. It's it's a message that cannot be altered. It's a message that cannot be changed. It is the same gospel of that time that saved sinners in those days. That same gospel is the one still saving sinners today, making people to repent, making people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking at uh, First Corinthians. Chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. And then it says, Which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by the which also ye are saved. You see, when you preach the right gospel, the true gospel, and the faithful gospel, and you do that faithfully, people are going to be saved. Just as somebody prayed to you and you were saved, you are going to pray to another and that person is going to be saved in Jesus' name. And then it goes on in verse 3, it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's the first point. Christ died for our sins. Christ died for sins. Without the death of Jesus, without the death of our substitute, there's no salvation. And so the message of the evangelist is not complete. We must talk about the death of Christ, the blood of Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ that now replaces the sinner. And because the sinner's judgment had been placed on Christ, that's why they will not die anymore. That's why they will be saved. Look at the next verse there. And then he goes on to say, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. We're talking about the death of Christ, and the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. That's what brings the salvation to those people. Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, if people are going to be saved, see what happens here. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verses 9 and 10. It says in verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy Jesus, mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead tell me what happens that shall be saved you believe in your heart if you're going to believe that in your heart you must tell them you must tell them that they don't have to perish they don't have to die for their sins that Christ died for them already whatever you say whatever stories you tell whatever illustrations you give this must come into the message that Christ has taken their place. The soul that sinners it shall die, but so that they will not die, so that they will not perish, somebody else died for them. The perfect one, the sinless one, the spotless one, the one that committed no sin, the one that was not guilty of any sin, whatever, the one that was perfect, he died for them so that they will not die. They must believe that. And that Jesus rose again on the third day for their justification. Look at that verse 9 again, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto, unto what? salvation that's what you are after healing is good that's not the end deliverance is good that's not the end but salvation that their sins are forgiven their lives are transformed if any man be in christ is a new so creature all things are passed away and behold all things have become new that's the message we're bringing to them we're looking at luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 and i'm reading here from verse 45 luke Chapter 24, verse 45. Then open ye their understanding. Wonderful. That, that's what you go to do. You're talking to the sinners, and the sinners are blind spiritually. 
They're in darkness spiritually. They don't have any knowledge of salvation spiritually. And now you go there to open their eyes of understanding. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. You see that? That's part of the message of salvation. He suffered. He died. He bore your guilt, he bore your pain, he bore your punishment, and everything was laid on Christ, paid it all. And now, because he paid it all, he died. Now he rose again. Look at the 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That's all everybody to be saved now. They need to repent, turn away from their sins, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, and they will be saved. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. We must preach repentance. It is not just that you know God will bless you and God will heal you. Yes, God will. He will heal them. He will bless them. He'll deliver them. He'll destroy the works of the devil. But you must repent of their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation to come unto them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 30. Acts chapter 17. 17 verse 30 and the times of this ignorance God winged at but now commanded how many people Commanders are many people, all men are many places, everywhere to do what? You see that that's for to repent. It's not okay, and they may repent in Lagos, but over here, what they need is encouragement. Everywhere to repent. They may repent in Africa, but you know, America, they are nice, nice people. They are just to raise up their hands and say, Yes, I believe, I believe. Everybody, everywhere. He commands all men everywhere to do what? to repent. Why? Because of a start to want because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge how many people is he going to judge? He is going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has appointed he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. He raised him from the dead. That's assurance he has given all men. That's why everyone everywhere ought to repent. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. We're looking at verse 20. It tells us in verse 20 and how I cared back nothing that was profitable unto you and I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Number one, tell me repentance toward God. Number two, tell me, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the complete gospel. That we must repent of their sins, turn away from their sins, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then they will be saved. That is what we are to preach. And who are we to preach to? Every creature, every creature. The Lord is not willing that anybody should perish. That's why if there is a neighbor you have never spoken to, why have you not spoken to them? You want them to perish? If there is this schoolmate you have not spoken to what you not spoken to him or to her you want her to perish if there is a fellow teacher you have not spoken to what you not spoken to him you want him to perish God wants everybody saved the same I know him he will not accept how do you know he will not accept look at Saul of Tarsus you would have thought you will never be saved but he got saved he got saved that friend of yours will get saved that relative will get saved tell the do your duty. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and the Lord will back up the word in your mouth in Jesus' name. But the message must be constant. Tell me point number three. Le troisième point. The irreproachable models of soul winning evangelists. Which models can we point to? The people that actually evangelized and they were effective and they did the work like, you know, if we do the work like them today, we will succeed. I'm looking at a successful person there. You will succeed in Jesus' name. I want, you to, I want you to write the word evangelist, you know, write it vertically down. That is E V A N 
ö l i s t s t i s t evangelist evangelist you see there are models in the bible that shows how evangelists ought to preach how you as an evangelist soul winner today how you ought to preach e for ezekiel ezekiel we're looking at ezekiel chapter 3 ezekiel chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore hear the word my mouth and give the warning for me as the evangelist hear the Watch from the mouth of the Lord. What did he tell us to tell them? What did he tell them when he was here? He said, Except thou repent, thou shalt surely perish. And except you believe on me, you cannot see life, you cannot have eternal life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not is condemned already. Hear the watch at his mouth and give them warning from him. And Ezekiel was a model of evangelism. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, tell me, it shall die. That's the message of the evangelist. That is, if they continue in their sin at the end of the road of sinning, they will die. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, it's telling us in verse 30, it says, Therefore, I will judge your whole house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves. That's evangelist. That's evangelist. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Of Israel, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. That's the message of the evangelist. An effective evangelist is so winning evangelist. A fruitful evangelist. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. Says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye in your habit and life. V is the voice in the yeah, wilderness, yeah, the voice yeah, in the wilderness, that's John, that's John you see John, uh, when he went to him and said, who are you? what, are we, what answer are we going to give to the people that sent us, he said, go tell them I'm a voice, I'm a voice and the voice crying in the wilderness we're looking at John chapter 1 John chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 22, John chapter 1 verse 22, then said they unto him, who are thou that Afin we may give an an answer an to them that say to us, what says thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice. I am the voice. The voice of prophecy. I am the voice. The voice of promise. I am the voice. The voice that is warning Israel to turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight in the way of the Lord, says the prophet Isaiah. You know, he told the people to repent in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Let's hear the voice now. I am the voice. The voice crying in the wilderness. I'm looking at uh, Matthew chapter 3. We're reading it from verse 7. In verse 7 it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. That's evangelism. When you are warning the people, and when you tell them at the end of the life of sinning, there's going to be judgment. And if they're not going to be judged by the mighty power of the Lord and by the faithful, righteous judge of heaven and earth, they must repent today. That's the evangelist. The evangelist is like Ezekiel, is warning the people, bringing them to the Lord. And the evangelist is like the voice in the wilderness. A, the evangelist like Apollos. Apollos. These are people that know the scriptures and when they speak, they speak convincingly concerning Christ, the Savior. There will be no doubt in the heart of anyone. When Apollos stands up and then he preaches the word of Christ and says Christ is the Savior and Christ is the one. Their minds will not be here 
and there, any other savior, any other redeemer, any other one that can bring me remission of sin. No, there's no other name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. And we're reading from verse 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. And I read here from verse. 24. In verse 24, he tells us, he gives us the name of the person. He says, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at, at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and a mighty and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Wait there for a moment. You see, sometimes uh, if you're in a church, where well, there's no excuse for us to preach any poor message, but have you noticed, have you thought about it? In the church, we can get away with a poor message. Because those are members of the church. They will come again. They will come again. Because they are always there. They are faithful members of the church. They are there because, you know, they have to serve. They are there because they have to sing. They are there because they have to organize the church. They are there because they have to do a lot of things. Therefore, whether we preach good or we don't preach good, Maybe they will still come. But when you go to the world, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You have to be effective. And you have to talk to them in a way they understand. The thing that will greet them, the thing that will arrest their attention, and the thing that will make them not to have a way of escape. And this person, an evangelist Apollos, was told he was an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, when he came to Ephesus. Let's look at verse 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Not only just convinced them, mightily, effectively, powerfully, in a way they could not escape. He mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. That's the only Savior. There's no other Savior in any other place. And therefore, you want to develop yourself to preach and to speak convincingly, like Apollos and for Nathan, and for Nathan. We're coming to second, uh, second Samuel chapter 12. Second Samuel chapter 12. Basically, an evangelist is talking to a sinner. And the evangelist, when you're talking to a sinner, if you tell the sinner there are sinners in the world, oh yes, I know that, I know that. And all these people are reading about them in the papers, and you know, they're corrupt, they steal our money, they do this and that. Anybody will agree with you, there are sinners in the world. There are weak Get people in the world. Of course, I know that. In fact, you know, or something they did to my daddy, they did to my mommy. My daddy should not have died now, but you know, wicked people. And then you say there are drunkards, there are smokers. Of course, of course, yes. It is the evangelists that will bring the message home. It's not just that they are sinners, but you, the one I'm talking to, you are a sinner. That's an evangelist. Look at uh, chapter 12, Second Samuel, chapter 12, verse 7. And Nathan said unto David, tell me, how much the man? Are you an evangelist? Not somebody looking down, and he's not willing to look at the face of David, and he's saying, "Thou art the man." He looked at him. I bought two eyeballs. I'm talking to you. Look at what you have done. See the story I told you. An evangelist is a good story. and he says thou art the man that's an evangelist an evangelist is a person like Ezekiel it's a person like the voice in the wilderness it's a person like Apollos and it's a person like Nathan that says thou art the man and then he said those doors have you done and look at verse 13 here now in verse 13 see what happened in verse 13 it says and, uh, and David said uh, unto Nathan what did he say I have seen. I've seen against the Lord. I have seen against the Lord. I have seen against the Lord. And then he led him and he prayed the sinner's prayer. And eventually God saved. And Nathan said, The Lord has put away the sin. Thou shalt not die. That's the evangelist right there. And she is for Gabriel. She is for Gabriel. And we're looking at Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 15. We're saying that this 
this is a model. This is how evangelists comport themselves, and this is how evangelists actually present the message. message. It tells us in uh, Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 15. Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 15. Here is saying, and it came to pass uh, when uh, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me the appearance of a man, and I had a voice, a man's voice, between the bands of Eli, which called and, and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So, this Gabriel came there where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid, I fell upon my face, and uh, but he said unto me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. You see, you read the Bible too. It's not only believers that read the Bible. Sometimes, sinners read the Bible. Like the eunuch of Ethiopia that read the Bible. And then he was reading the Bible. He was reading about salvation, about Christ, about Jesus, about the Savior, and he didn't understand. And then you find the Spirit coming to him and saying, Understand this thou what thou readest. And he said, How can I understand? Except some man should guide me. And here Gabriel came to Daniel. He had been reading the scriptures and reading about the vision of what will happen. He didn't understand. And then the man said, Gabriel, make this man to understand. He's the evangelist that make this sinner to understand. Make this woman to understand. The way to life eternal and the way we can be saved. And so the evangelist is like that, giving us understanding. You remember I said this is Gabriel that came to Mary and said, Hail Mary, and then you are blessed of all women. And gave the message of the Savior being born into the world. He is for Elijah. He is for Elijah. We're coming to First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 18, and we're reading from verse 21. The evangelists must get people out of their halting position, out of their double mindedness, and make sure that it's not just either idol or Jesus, either my good works or what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. We must come to a decision that this is the way, and this is the only way. We're looking at First Kings chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 21. Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt she between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You see, many sinners are double minded, they go to church. They pay their dues. Then they still go and worship idols during the week. And then you are confronting them. You say, I want to talk to you seriously about a matter you must think about before you die. And you can die anytime. Tell me. I know you go to church. I know you pay pastor's deal. I know you observe Christmas. I know you observe Easter. I know you observe this and that. Tell me, if you died right now, do you think you'll get to heaven? I think maybe I will get to heaven. What's, what's your ground? What's your reason? How do you know you will get to heaven? And they give you this reason, you knock it off. Give you that reason, you knock it off. And they will say, come to a decision. If this God is a wise God, who has sent his only begotten son, if there's another way to be saved, he wouldn't have sent his only begotten son to die for us on the cross of Calvary. The very fact that he sent Jesus, his only son, only begotten son, to die for you on the cross of Calvary, it means that there is no no all the way and all that way that you are taking is not going to land you in salvation, it will land you in hellfire. And eventually, you will begin to understand that this God is not the right thing. Say, the Lord is going to look at verse 36. In verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known. 
Power will le come from heaven. The sick will be healed and your prayers will be delivered. You will see something. When the people saw, when all the people saw, each fell on their faces and they said, What did they say? The Lord he is the God. The Lord he is the God. And this convincing evangelist, L is for Luke. L is for Luke. You see, there are people that uh, that reach these highly pleased people, and there are people that reach all these, uh, you know, sophisticated people, oh, all these political large, leaders, political the powers. There are people that can reach them, and we have to reach them. We have to talk to them. Somebody has to rise up and go and talk to them because we have to reach all the creatures, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's look at Luke. We're looking at Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. I'm reading from verse 1 for as much as many have taken in hand to search in order the declaration of the six which are most surely believed among us. Even as they have declared them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. It seemed good unto me also, having, having that perfect understanding of all things and from the very very first, from the very first, to, to write unto thee in order. Tell me the name there. Excellent. Most Theophilus. excellent Theophilus. Go to their palace in a wonderful, in a humble way and go and tell them. And go to those offices and go and tell them the most excellent Theophilus and, uh, you know, Mr. So and so, Madam So and so, and the people that have the great offices and the log behind those offices. Somebody has to know how to knock at that door, how to open that door, and like you go to tell the most excellent Theophilus that that. I might just know the certainty of those things wherein thou has been instructed. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. After this man gave his life to the Lord, Luke kept writing, Luke kept writing, and wrote about the history of how Christ came, how Christ saved us, how Christ sacrificed, and everything that Christ did. And now, after Christ went to heaven, he wrote the Acts of the Apostles to this in Geophilus. He says in chapter 1 verse 1, Acts of the Apostles, and the former treatise have I made, O Geophilus, of all that Jesus began but to do and teach. And so you understand what we need to do if we're going to do the work of the evangelist. I is for Isaiah. I is for Isaiah. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6 and I'm reading here from verse 7 and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched thy leaves and thine iniquity is taken away thy sin is purged that man was saved that man was sanctified and then after that sanctification also I had the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us and uh, then said I everybody you say this together one two three go here am I sent me. Here am I sent me. And the Lord sent him to go talk to the nation and to talk to them about how their sins can be forgiven, how they can be saved, how they can have assurance of salvation. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 6. Seek here the Lord while he may be found. That's the evangelist right there. Seek here the Lord while he may be found. And call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. 
and your righteous man be false and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon and S is for Stephen S is for Stephen we're looking at Acts of, Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 8 Acts chapter 6 verse 8 We're reading from verse uh, chapter 6 Verse 8 of Acts A city full of faith and power Did great wonders And miracles among the people Must add the miracle ministry Miracle ministry because Jesus said As you go preach the kingdom of God Heal the sick and raise the dead And cleanse the lepers And it says freely you have received And freely give as we keep them the Gospel. We're talking about the power, the power of Christ to save, and the power of Christ to heal, and the power of Christ to deliver. And we say that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did in this combine is still able to do today because God says, I am God, I change not. And the power of God has not changed. And as we proclaim the Lord who saves and the Lord who heals, we'll find that through you, people are going to be saved. And through you, people are going to be healed and they'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Look at uh, verse 10 here in verse 10. It says in verse 10, and they were not able to receive the wisdom and the spirit by which he speak. They were not able to receive the wisdom by which he speak. And now we're looking at T for Timothy. T for Timothy. We're looking at second uh, Timothy chapter. 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 5 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 but watch thou in all things you will watch endure affliction you will endure do the work of an evangelist that's what you are going to do from today and this work will prosper in your hand you are going to speak to sinners and those sinners they are going to respond and they are going to repent in Jesus name do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry the lord has called you and this calling will be effective and as you go you go with a mission as you go you go with a message as you go you go with a model before you understanding there is an ezekiel there was an ezekiel at that time and ezekiel today there was a voice speaking in the wilderness at that time and that voice in my community today there was an Apollos and I'm going to be that Apollos here today there was a Nathan I'm going to be like Nathan there was an angel Gabriel and that quality of angel Gabriel making people to understand the way of the Lord I'm going to have that in Jesus name here comes Elijah and we're saying give us another Elijah today somebody there another Elijah today I said somebody there another Elijah today and then you tell them what you hold in between two opinions if I does be the same then serve I does but look at what I does have been doing for you but if Jesus our savior if Jesus our healer if Jesus our redeemer then follow him and multitudes through you will follow Jesus in his name and then you'll be like Luke you'll be like Isa like Stephen and like Timothy if we're going to be the evangelist the Lord has called us to be and we're going to be number one one, you will have the faithfulness of Ezekiel. The faithfulness of Ezekiel. Hear the word from my mouth and go and give them one in from me. Number two, you have the fearlessness of the voice crying in the wilderness. The fearlessness of John the Baptist. The faithfulness of Ezekiel. The fearlessness of the voice crying in the wilderness. You'll have the fervency of Apollos. The fervency of Apollos. You'll be speaking with passion and with all your heart and with all your strength and all your energy. You have the fervency of Apollos. You'll have the frankness of Nathan. The frankness of Nathan. Telling David and telling the sinner, you're not missing words. You're not pointing here and there. You're saying, thou art the the man you'll be frank with them you'll have the freshness of Gabriel you're just coming from the presence of God you pray through and then you have the freshness of the spirit 
you have the freshness of Gabriel and then you have the firmness of Elijah the firmness of Elijah no compromise and then you say the God that brings the fire the God that brings the revival the God that brings the healing the God that brings the deliverance let him be our God and then when you pray you are firm you say God of Abraham Isaac and of Israel let the people know that you have sent me and that I have spoken your word in the very truth and the fire will come but you must have the friendliness of Luke the friendliness of Luke so friendly to, uh, the, uh, to this most excellent two fellows, he was able to write to him, able to communicate the word unto him. It was a non threatening personality that look, look the doctor, you know, the psychology of communication, he knew the effectiveness of communication, and he used that advantageously. The friendliness of look, you have the forthrightness of Isaiah, the forthrightness of Isaiah, all your more, your moons, and all your sacrifices are nothing uh, don't bring vain oblation uh, before me i'm tired of them uh, but today you can come let us reason together uh, if your serious uh, fears uh, can let uh, uh, make uh, them uh, as white uh, as snow uh, and if they uh, be red uh, like uh, crimson uh, he'll uh, make uh, you uh, as well uh, and whosoever uh, 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 he that is willing and willing shall uh, eat the good of them but he that refuses shall be slain with the sword for the mouth of the lord has said it come now come now come now let us reason together salvation is here you'll have the forthrightness of Isaiah you'll have the fullness of Stephen the fullness of Stephen he was full of the spirit of God he was full of power he was full of faith he was full of wisdom and he declared the word without fear without favor you'll have the fruitfulness of Timothy fruitfulness of Timothy you'll be fruitful from this day if you have not experienced fruit before the period of fruit has now come in your life. Go and do the work of an evangelist. Go and be fruitful. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Rise up now and let's talk to the Lord in prayer. Of all the message of the evangelist, the Lord is sending you. Go and preach. Arise. Go and preach. Do it. The Lord will go with you.